No Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife, Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFord. That's ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? Because it is. It's a real great picture. I married a monster from outer space. <laughs> Here, give me more of the sheet. It's sort of a science fiction musical. A science fiction musical? That's a new one on me. One of the songs in there is beginning to be a real big hit. Disintegrate me, baby, with your cosmic ray. <laughs> what kind of a song is that? Oh, well, it's sort of a novelty song. This one-man trio sings it to a giant amoeba. Oh, I dig the giant amoeba, but what's a one-man trio? It's this monster from outer space with three heads. Hey, what are you doing? I'm tucking in the sheets. Well, thanks very much. I think i better finish this myself. Okay. I'm getting kind of tired anyway. Hey, I just made that. I know. It's nice and comfortable. Why can't you see the picture tomorrow night? Well, tonight's the last night it's playing. Besides, what makes you think Nancy wouldn't want to see it? Well, ordinarily, she probably would, but she's counting on going to a dance. If you'd wanted her to go to a picture, you shouldn't have asked her to go to the dance. Maybe she'd like to change her mind. Would you change your mind if you'd gone out and bought a new dress and gotten your hair done for a dance? No, I'd change my name. <laughs> Disintegrate me, baby, with a cosmic ray. Uh, Harry, there's a wonderful picture playing down at the Bijou. Yes, Ricky and I were just discussing it. Oh, have you seen it, Rick? No, sir, but I sure would like to. Well, why don't you get down there tonight? Hey, I'm making that bed. Oh, <laughs> well, gee, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, it's so nice and comfortable. Do you mind if I lie here just a little while? You gonna see it, Pop? Oh, I don't know, son. That's up to your mother. I'd sure like to see it. Tonight's the last night. Well, why don't you go see it, then? Well, Mom won't let me. Oh, what's the matter, Harriet? It's a swell picture. Got a wonderful song in there. Disintegrate me, baby. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> well, Ricky knows why he can't go. Oh, what's the matter, Rick? I promised Nancy I'd take her to a formal dance tonight. I must have been out of my mind. <laughs> well, regardless, you certainly can't call it off now. Oh, well, I want to take her out. I just wanted to go to the movies instead. Well, you know you can't, Ricky. She's counting on going to the dance. Your mother's right. You can't back out now. I don't know what I was thinking of. Well, you'll probably have a good time at the dance. Well, sure. They may even play Disintegrate Me Baby. <laughs> Ricky, get off my bed. Why don't you ask Pop to get off mine? Well, tell him yourself. It's your bed. I will not. I respect my parents. Come on, will you get up, please? Okay, break it off. Then I won't have to go to the dance tonight. That'd be a break for some girl. Look, you're going to the dance. Where's your dark suit? This may surprise you, Mom, but it's hanging in there in the closet. Did you get your girl a corsage? What for? Well, to wear. Girls appreciate those little things, you know. This looks like it needs to be pressed. Well, why? The dance isn't strictly formal. <laughs> what do you think, Ozzy? Mm -hmm. Ozzy? Oh, well, I don't know. Everybody says it's a real good picture. <laughs> Thanks, dear. I knew I could count on you. Here, Rick, take this down and have it pressed. Boy, these dances just aren't worth all the trouble. Oh, you see if my pink socks are clean, Mom? Well, they're downstairs. Oh, hey, wait a minute. You forgot the pants. Ricky? <laughs> How about you, Dave? You going out tonight, too? No, I don't think so. Oh, haven't you got a date with Susie? Uh, no, sir, not tonight. Well, how come? Well, she's beginning to be kind of a pain in the neck lately. Well, in what way? Well, she likes to go out with me and then make a fuss over somebody else. She thinks she's the belle of the ball or something. Gee, she always seemed like a nice little girl to me. Well, she's all right, I guess. It's just that she's always playing one guy against the other. Well, you know what to do in a case like that, don't you, Dave? Well, yeah, last time I really told her off. Oh, no, no. Uh, never do that, son. Now, I don't want to sound like an authority on women, but you were playing right into her hands. In what way? By letting her know you were mad at her. See, uh, all women love to get a guy jealous. But if you let a girl know you are jealous, Boy, you're really sunk. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, just act indifferent. If you'll pardon an old-fashioned expression, play it cool. <laughs> Thanks, Pop. I think I'll try that. <laughs> Any time at all, Dave.
Harriet, did you see this letter that came from the photographic studio? Yes, I read it a couple of days ago. <laughs> Boy, what a corny gimmick. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, I guess you don't remember it. Listen to this. Dear Mrs. Nelson, somebody wants your picture. If you will call our studio for an appointment, we will be pleased to make a fine 8 by 10 portrait of you. Naturally, there will be no charge. Signed, Bensfield Photo Studios. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, I said I read it a couple of days ago. What's so funny? Well, it's just a ridiculous come on. Somebody wants your picture? <laughs> well, what's so funny? Don't you think anybody want my picture? <laughs> Sure, I'm just laughing at the lengths they'll go to to drum up business, that's all. You'd want it, wouldn't you? Well, of course I would, but that has nothing to do with the ad. I, I'm just trying to point out... Well, don't you see what I mean? Well, I'm not sure I do. Why don't you want my picture? <laughs> I want your picture. I'd love to have a new picture of you. Oh, you're just saying that to be polite. No, for goodness sakes, I'm not polite. Well, I, 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 you're making a big deal out of nothing. I just happen to mention that this is a corny gimmick, that's all. You don't understand what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> In the first place, uh, you'd have to be out of your mind to fall for a thing like this. I fell for it. <laughs> you, you, well... <laughs> I went down and had some photos made last Thursday. One for each of the boys, one for my mother, and you don't get any. <laughs> now, Harry, that, that's not fair. I'd love to have a picture of you. Well, we'll see. I'm going to pick up the prints this afternoon. Oh, they'll probably turn out beautifully. <laughs> what do I know about it? I... I don't think I've changed so much. Hi, Oz. Oh, hi, Thorny. <laughs> What's new? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> Meet you. <laughs> I guess this just isn't my day. Why? What's the matter? Oh, I don't know. Tell me this. Does Catherine ever misinterpret anything you say? Well, not more than two or three times a day. Why? Well, Harriet and I just had the silliest misunderstanding over absolutely nothing at all. Uh, this letter came in the mail for her. A, a ridiculous, corny gimmick from a photo studio. You mean the one that starts somebody wants your picture? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. We got one just like it. Just an ad. Oh, yeah, sure. So, uh, and I started pointing out to Harriet how silly it was. And before I realized what was happening, she had the whole conversation twisted around to where she claimed I didn't want her picture. Well, that figures. You should have known better than to step on something with a little romance in it. <laughs> What's romance got to do with it? Oh, come now, Oz. Can't you see how the line, somebody wants your picture, would appeal to a woman? Now, look. Harriet gets the letter. Of course, she knows it's an ad, but she pretends it isn't. In her mind, she's thinking, somebody wants my picture. Someone is admiring me from afar. Some mysterious stranger standing in the shadows. Some knight in shining armor. And then you have to come along and pop the bubble. You... For <laughs> goodness sakes, Thorny, it's just an ad. Ah, oh, that's your trouble. You're too matter of fact. You should have handled the letter a little more subtly, like I did. What did you do? I threw it in the wastebasket before Catherine could see it. <laughs> oh, hi, Pop. Hi, Mr. Thornberry. Oh, hello, Rick. Hi, Rick. I was wondering if I could order a corsage for tonight. Oh, yeah, sure. I think it's a good idea. I figured I might as well go all out as long as I'm stuck anyway. <laughs> Okay, son, I tell you what you do. Go down to the florist and order it and charge it to me. Okay, thanks, Pop. Boy, I sure hope Nancy appreciates all this money I'm spending on her. <laughs> Sounds like Rick takes his women pretty casually. Yeah, I wish a little of it would rub off on Dave. What do you mean? Well, I'm afraid Dave lets his girl make him jealous. Well, what's the matter with that? Women like their men to show a little jealousy. Oh, are you kidding, Thorny? Once a girl knows you're jealous, you're really dead. Boy, I can see why you're in the doghouse with Harriet. <laughs> you don't know the first thing about women. <laughs> you do, I suppose. Just try to be helpful, Oz. Some men know how to handle women and some don't. And you're a definite don't. <laughs> I hate to interrupt this sparkling conversation, but I have more important things to do. I'll be seeing you. If you need any more advice on women, just call an old horny. I hear you talking.
Catherine. Catherine, can I come in now, dear? Excuse me, I was in the dark room. I'm Mrs. Nelson, and you asked me to stop by this afternoon for my pictures. Yes, of course. I have them right here. And they turned out beautifully. Oh, yes, that's very nice. Oh, thank you. Frankly, we don't get too many women who are satisfied with their pictures. Oh, well, I'm very happy with mine. Oh, uh, just a minute. There are only three here. Well, you only ordered three. Well, wasn't I supposed to get one for free? Oh, certainly. But we've already sent that one out. Sent it out? To who? Uh, to the person who asked for it. It's stated very clearly in our letter that somebody wanted your picture. You mean somebody actually wanted it? Of course. I thought you understood that. Well, no, not exactly. Who was it? Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't tell you that. Well, after all, it was my picture. Uh, yes, I know, but... Well, you see, we have our professional ethics to consider. And when one of our customers says, don't you dare tell now, we just don't dare tell. What a man? No fair pumping. What do you look like? Mm-mm. Wait till Ozzy hears about this. <laughs> Meet George, the hard worker. His tail's a tearjerker. His hurry-worry life just dismays his poor wife. All the hustle and bustle, the work-a-day tussle. He's a miserable sight when he comes home each night. His nerves all a-jangle, all ready to wrangle. His stomach upset. But she's ready, you bet. It's time for Pepto-Bismol, time for hospital-tested Pepto-Bismol. For upset stomach, Pepto-Bismol is America's leading remedy. Here's why. No soda, no alkalizer works like Pepto-Bismol. You see, when upset stomach strikes, tender walls of both the stomach and the lower digestive tract become irritated, and you have that well-known stomach ache. But Pepto-Bismol's special medicinal formula soothes irritated walls of both the stomach and the lower digestive tract with a gentle coating action. Here's how this important coating action works. Into this wet flask, I'll pour some Pepto-Bismol. There. Swish it around a bit. See how the Pepto-Bismol clings to the slippery, wet sides of the flask? This coating action is so important in helping to soothe your digestive upsets. So get this wonderful pink liquid in the familiar triangular bottle. This is Don Morrow reminding you for upset stomach, always. Take soothing Pepto-Bismol and feel good again. <laughs> How about what? Well, that picture. Can you imagine a thing like that? Oh, yeah. I wonder who my secret admirer is. Gee, I'm sure I don't know. I wonder if it could be Charlie Adams. No, I, I don't think it's Charlie Adams. Why not? Well, yeah, maybe it was Charlie Adams. No, I don't think it was Charlie Adams. No, I guess not. Ozzy, doesn't it bother you? No, of course not. Why should it bother me? Well, somebody has my picture. Well, it just shows whoever it is has pretty good taste. Aren't you a little bit jealous? <laughs> well, no, you're very attractive, dear. I don't blame anybody for wanting your picture. I think it's very flattering. Aren't you upset by it? Well, of course not. Why should I be? If some woman wanted my picture, would you be upset about it? What woman? <laughs> well, I don't know what woman. It's just a, a hypothetical question. Well, give me a hypothetical answer. What woman? <laughs> I tell you, I don't know. I'm just trying to draw a parallel, that's all. Well, I certainly would be upset about it. Aren't you even a little bit jealous? Well, of course not. A happy marriage is based on mutual confidence and trust. I trust you, don't you trust me? Well, of course I do. What woman? <laughs> Harriet, it's your picture they want, not mine. And you are jealous. No, of course I'm not. Well, that's a pretty strange attitude, if you ask me. Well, I don't see what's strange about it. Well, most husbands would be absolutely furious if they knew some other man had their wife's picture. 
Well, okay, if it makes you happier, I'll be furious. Who am I supposed to be furious at? The man who has my picture. All right, I'm mad at the man that has your picture. Now, uh, what are we having for dinner? Well, I haven't decided. But if your coffee tastes strange, maybe you better not drink it. <laughs> Look, Harriet, don't be mad at me just because I'm not jealous of your secret admirer. Well, that's just it. You used to be. Why aren't you jealous? Well, maybe I'm getting a little smarter. They say as you grow older, you get smarter. And we're growing older. <laughs> That is, I, I mean, not that you look any older, dear. <laughs> oh, my, Pop. Well, I got to hand it to you. You sure know a lot about women. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Dave. What's this? Uh, oh, hi, Mom. I didn't even see you. What's this about your father? Uh, he gave me some good advice. Oh. Well, don't go away mad now. No, I'll be right back. I'm just going to get the arsenic for your coffee. <laughs> Mom's a great kidder, isn't she, Pop? Yeah, we hope so. <laughs> Well, I started to tell you, I took your advice and it really worked. Oh, then you going to the dance after all? Dance? Oh, no, Pop, that's Ricky. Oh! <laughs> Sorry. I'm a little confused today, son. Don't you remember you told me not to show any jealousy? Oh, yeah. Did that really work, Dave? You mean it doesn't always? Well, uh, yes, usually, but this has been such a confusing day all around. But it worked out okay for you, huh? Uh, yes, sir. I just acted very nonchalant. You know, played it cool like you said, and it worked like a charm. Oh, that's good. That's the way to do. Uh, never show any arsenic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Always keep them guessing. Uh, there's somebody at the door, Pop. Oh, I'll get it. Looks like a delivery man. Nelson residence? Yes. Here you are, sir. Oh, thank you. Who are the flowers for, Pop? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, uh, maybe this is the corsage Ricky ordered for the dance tonight. Gee, it's kind of big for a corsage. Oh, no, they have... <laughs> More like cut flowers. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that crazy Ricky ordering cut flowers. Hey, they're for Mom. Oh, they can't be. I didn't order any flowers for your mother. There's no card here. Uh, the flowers must have made a mistake. Well, they don't usually make mistakes, do they? Well, uh, they, they must have. Uh, I didn't order any flowers for your mother. Do you want me to take them to her? Uh, no, that's all right, Dave. I'll take them to her. Well, thanks a lot for the advice, Pop. Oh. Who are the flowers for? Oh, well, they're for you, apparently. Oh, well, thank you, dear. You didn't have to send me flowers. I wasn't really mad at you. Oh, no, <laughs> You're absolutely right. Well, no, uh, Harriet. I'm very proud of you for not being jealous about the silly old picture. Uh, Harriet. Oh, aren't they beautiful? Red Rose is my favorite. Uh, Harriet. Oh, thank you, dear. Did you put a card in here? Harriet, if you'll listen to me for a minute, please. I didn't send you these flowers. You didn't? No, I didn't. Well, then who did? I'm sure I don't know. Well, don't get mad because somebody sent me flowers. What do you mean, don't get mad? You wouldn't get mad if some strange woman sent flowers to me? That's ridiculous. Oh, it was ridiculous, huh? A lot of women prefer older men. <laughs> you mean older men? You're not so old. You're darn right I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to stand by and have some man insult my wife. Well, I don't think it's insulting to send me flowers. I think it's very nice. Well, I don't think it's very nice. I think it's a lot of nerve. That's what I think. At least it's nice to know you're jealous. Who's jealous? You are, and I'm glad. You had me worried. Who ever heard of sending flowers without a card? What kind of a coward is he, anyway? <laughs> I'll put these in water. Uh, yes, I'd like to speak to you about an order. Well, we have just about everything you could want here. Now, would you like a plant or some cut flowers? Uh, no, no, I I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't want to place an order. Uh, I wanted to ask you about some flowers that arrived at our house about an hour ago. Uh, two dozen red roses with uh, long stems. Uh, what was the name, please? Uh, Mr. Nelson. I don't seem to remember anything like that. Well, uh, that's what I figured. It, it was probably a mistake. Of course, I was out of the shop for a while, but... 
No, there's nothing here for a Mr. Nelson. There's no card or anything. There's an order here for two dozen roses for a Mrs. Nelson. Uh, could that be what you have reference to? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, who sent those, please? Well, it doesn't say here. Uh, are you sure you don't know? Well, I, I don't. That's the reason I came in, to find out. You say you're Mr. Nelson? Uh, yes, I am. And somebody sent your wife flowers? Uh, two dozen red roses. And you don't know who it is? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> What's that supposed to be? Don't you think it's exciting? Your wife has a secret admirer and you don't even know who it is. Well, that's the reason I came in here. I want to find out who sent these roses to my wife. Well, wouldn't she tell you? Uh, no, uh, she doesn't know. <laughs> Is that what she said? Well, uh, uh, no. But, well, I didn't ask her, but I'm sure if she knew, she'd tell me. Oh, maybe she would, and maybe she wouldn't. <laughs> We're wasting our time here. May I speak to a man clerk, please? Uh, we don't have a man here. Just my husband and myself. <laughs> Uh, he isn't here now, and furthermore, he wouldn't tell either. Well, uh, maybe I'd better tell you the whole story. See, uh, this letter arrived at our house for my wife, and I happened to read it. And it was addressed to her? Well, oh, yes, of course. Mr. Nelson, my husband and I have been married for 30 years, and we have never opened each other's mail. Oh, <laughs> had nothing to do with it. A happy marriage is based on trust and confidence. You've got to trust your wife, and she's got to trust you. Well, I'm sure she does. Oh, do you think she would if she knew you opened her mail? No, no, you don't understand. I didn't open her mail. The, uh, this letter arrived at the house, and it was addressed to her, and it said, somebody wants your picture. Well, then, obviously, it's the same person who sent her the flowers. No, 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 it, it wasn't the same. I'll bet it was. <laughs> well, if you're so sure, then who sent her the flowers? Ooh, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> Hello, dear. Hi. Aren't they pretty? Kind of wilted to me. Well, so do you. Where have you been? Oh, just downtown for a while. Oh, that's nice. Did you meet anybody? <laughs> What's the matter, Harry? Are you jealous? Well, of course not. Well, then how come you're pumping me with all these questions? Well, I was just trying to make conversation. After all, a happy marriage is based on mutual confidence and trust. I never open your mail. Who says you did? Yes, you've been married for 30 years. Who's been married 30 years? Well, the florist and her husband. <laughs> Why are you doing down to the florist? Well... Couldn't be you were trying to find out who sent me the flowers, could it? Why couldn't it? Because you're never jealous. Well, who says I'm not? Strange man starts sending flowers to my wife? I don't even know who it is. Well, you weren't jealous when a secret admirer came and picked up my picture from the photographers. Well, that was different. What's different about it? I was the one who picked up your picture. <laughs> you were? Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, what difference would it have made? Well, for one thing, I wouldn't have gone to all the trouble to send myself those roses. <laughs> you sent these roses to yourself? Yes, I did. Seemed to be the only way to make you jealous. Oh. <laughs> you did get jealous, didn't you? Well, no. No, I, I didn't get jealous. I got a little curious, perhaps. <laughs> All right, we'll let it go at curious. Come on, dinner's about ready. I'll be right there. Guard Hamilton and Burr. Well, uh, this is Mr. Nelson. I'd like to cancel that order for the dueling pistols. <laughs> Usually, the human body runs just like a clock, but sometimes upset stomach strikes and hits you like a rock. Oh! 
It hinders your digestion, makes it slower, slower, slower. And a great big dose of soda can make it slow up even more. <laughs> yes, overdoses of soda or alkalizers may actually retard digestion, prolong the upset. What you should take when upset stomach strikes is hospital-tested Pepto-Bismol. Because Pepto-Bismol does not slow down digestion as overdoses of soda and alkalizers may. Instead, Pepto-Bismol's special medicinal formula helps calm upsets with a gentle coating action that soothes irritated walls of not only the stomach, but also the lower digestive tract where soda and alkalizers have no effect whatsoever. So remember, upset stomach need not be cause for alarm. To feel okay, to be on your way, take soothing Pepto-Bismol and feel good again. This. Don't tell me we got something in the mail besides bills. Just listen. <laughs> Somebody has been watching you dance. As part of our program to encourage interest in the sultry rhythms of the mambo, we have had our professionally trained experts observing the dancers at various social functions throughout the city. We are happy to inform you that you have been selected as one of those who possess the necessary talents to make an outstanding mambo dancer. Just bring this letter to any one of our dance studios and you will be given absolutely free of charge five lessons in the mambo. Congratulations, and we hope to see you soon. Alvarez and Fink Dance Studios. How about that? I wonder where they saw me dance. At the charity ball at the tennis club, do you think? Um, uh, what makes you think the letter's addressed to you? Well, don't tell me it was sent to you. See for yourself. Dear Mr. Nelson, well, how about that? Hi, Mom, Pop. Oh, oh hi, Rick. hi, Rick. Boy, I sure am glad I went to dance last night. They had a contest, and Nancy and I won first prize. Oh, well, good for you. Wait a minute. Let's see that envelope. Just as I thought. Here's a letter for you, Mr. Ricky Nelson. <laughs> Sutton was seen as the photographer, Elvia Allman as the florist, and Chuck Colleen played the part of the delivery man. This is Vern Smith speaking. Is your name in the book? Here's where free speech begins, where schools are built, where national defense and foreign policy get their start where presidents are made. Get in the book of registered voters for your community. Register and vote. This has been an ABC Television Network presentation. <laughs>